Welcome back and today I'm going to continue looking at Synology NAS setup. As I mentioned in previous videos, I spend so much time talking about NAS and building NAS and mucking around with NAS that all too often I forget that there are quite basic easy things that a lot of people aren't as aware about and I do take that for granted. So this is a continued look at RAID on a Synology NAS. And what I want to talk about today is kind of a cluster of small things. One, I want to show you how to set up a RAID for the first time, but also some of the options open to you when you first set up your Synology NAS. Now, those that have watched my other videos, this is Admin Test 2, this NAS. This is one of the ones we use for a lot of our SHR versus RAID videos. Don't worry, you haven't had to have watched those videos. But just to give you a quick praise, this is a DS918 Plus, and I put three discs inside it, so it's three 4TB red hard drives. And what I'm going to do is talk you through some of the options open to you at the beginning with regards to safe redundancy. So, first and foremost, when you've got the device there, don't worry about all the other apps. The only one we care about today is Storage Manager. In the Storage Manager, we can see straight away from the overview that there's three discs in our four bay NAS. And the reason I went for three is just with three discs, you've got a few RAID options open to you um, in terms of both capacity and redundancy. The first thing we want to do is to head over to Storage Pool. And from the Storage Pool, we can start creating our RAID. Now, um, if we go to Create, we can either choose um, the flexibility that SHR offers, which is kind of growing, evolving RAID, where you can actually be quite flexible about the types of drives you use and the capacities or a standard RAID volume where if we go from that we can look at traditional RAIDs. So for example in a traditional RAID option here we can look at RAID 1 which is when you've got two drives working together with one, um, with all data being read and written to but to both disks always at the same time and therefore having a synchronized copy of all your data a RAID 5 where it still creates one drive of uh, redundancy so that's failure in, if you lose one drive but data is written across the drives, line after line, with one drive each time being selected to create a little blueprint of the data on the others with that blueprint moving all the time. So in other words, if you lose one drive, the system can still, still rebuild all the data and access the data using that little blueprint that's skipping drive to drive. RAID 6, same thing, but doing it with two bits of parity. RAID 10 is very similar to RAID 1, but it's four disks, so two and two. And you've got other ones like JBOD, which isn't really a RAID, it's just a pile of drives, just a bunch of drives, or RAID 0, where it pulls them all together. But of course, you have no um, data there whatsoever, uh, no redundancy there in the background with a RAID 0. We'll ignore basic, that's just one drive after the other, you can ignore that. Now, we could select a RAID 5 here, and that would give us two disks of, redund uh, two disks of storage and one disk of redundancy. Um, so in the case of three drives, you would go along, you'd select all three drives, you'd move forward, and this would wipe the disk drives um, and then create your RAID 5 environment. We'll do that in just a second. Um, if you went for a RAID 1, for example, and if you selected a RAID 1 environment, you can still select all three drives, but it will do the RAID 1 across multiple disks and have an extra disk. So two disks of redundancy, but you only get one drive of storage, which isn't great, very safe but not great. And other options like RAID 10, which aren't going to be possible on four disks, uh, on three disks, because you need four. And RAID 0 is possible, which will pull all the data together, but have no redundancy. And that's really it for those RAID types. And I will action one of those in a second. But just before I go, um, go ahead with that, I want you to have a look here at hot spare. Um, a hot spare is when you put drives inside your NAS, and you RAID together all but one of the disks. So in the case of this, you would put all the disks into a RAID apart from one, so I'd leave one of those disk drives out, and I would class that as a hot spare. So in this case, I'd make maybe disk four there, uh, so I'd left a gap, that would be a hot spare. And what that means is, in the event of your RAID collapsing, or one of your disk drives dying, the system will automatically rebuild the RAID using that hot spare. Rather than wait for you to introduce a new drive, it will use that hot spare instantaneously and rebuild the RAID accordingly. Now, at the Synology conference recently, they did um, elaborate on their new um, uh, data checking system that's gonna happen in the background with DSM-7. And what happens there is 
disk drives will be monitored for one of hundreds, if not thousands, of different indicators of drive failure. And what will happen is the system will try to predict a drive failing before it fails. It will see indicators like bad blocks, um, vibration sensors, heat, that sort of thing, and see these as an indication of failure. And when that happens, if you have a hot spare, it will clone the dodgy drive onto the hot spare in the background. So this means you won't have to wait for a RAID rebuild, it will just ensure that the dodgy drive has a perfect clone sitting in the wings all the time. And then you can flick over to that drive whenever you want, or if that drive fails, your other drive will be instantaneously available and with no need to worry about RAID rebuild times, which can take 10, 15, even 20 hours, depending on the capacity. So it's a very interesting idea, and Hotspur is something that I think is gonna get very, very cool very, very soon, because it's with this technology and this new software and maintenance technology implementing, it's pretty much gonna kill off the need for a RAID 6. You'll no longer need a two disk redundancy. You'll only need a one disk redundancy and the hot spare auto cloning system in the background there from Synology. So do look out for that in our DSM 7.0 video when it's out there. But staying back on point into this video, if you want to carry on building your RAID, you go for your storage pool, you create your storage pool. So in this case, we're gonna go for a RAID 5 with these disk drives, and we're gonna go for an, an SHR. Now, as mentioned before, SHR is much like RAID, but with an SHR, you can be flexible with the drives. You can put mixed drives in there, different capacities, and it will find a much more fluid access point. But for now, I'm gonna go for that SHR, go for next, click all the disk drives, Click next, we're gonna go for, we want all the dark drives to be wiped because they're new anyway. And it will now build our storage pool. But what's interesting is the storage pool, it's only half the job. The storage pool is just where all the data and all the LAN targets and all the data is gonna be pulled from and all your folders. After this, you have to create a volume and the volume is where all of the folder structure and the share folders and all that lives. The storage pool is just the available, think of it as the, the land, uh, whereas the volume is where you create the apartments, the houses, the road map. And from here, when you go for a choose an existing storage pool, we're creating our storage pool there. From here, set it to max, that's all the available storage, or use half the storage to create a smaller block um, of uh, volume here. So you can create two volumes with half capacity if you so choose. So these can be used for different things like surveillance or multimedia or different users. So in the case of this, we don't have to use up all the capacity. We could go for half the capacity. Um, let's go for 3000 um, allocation size of gigabits across that. We'll set that as BTRFS. That's the background check-in snapshot and all of that in the background. That's for another video. And now I'm gonna create 3000 gig of storage as store uh, as our volume here where we can create more folders from that. While it's doing that, we can also create another one, existing storage pool, still got some available storage as you can see, and now I'm gonna create all the rest of it and create another storage pool. And this storage pool, again, that other storage pool, we can have that as ext4 if we so choose. Carry on, and there you have it. Now you've got two completely independent volumes with these volumes doing whatever you need them to do, all on the same storage pool. Both of them connect, uh, uh, supported by RAID. And again, if I introduced a new drive into this NAS, I can either add that new NAS drive to the RAID or enable it as a hot spare. And therefore that drive will be there in the background ready as a safety net in case one of those other drives fails. That has been an explanation of the RAID options and configuration on your Synology NAS. The next video, I'm gonna show you um, how to uh, completely factory reset a Synology NAS, because uh, I really do need to. These NASs have been through the ring of these two that I'm using for these videos. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you do wanna get hold of the right NAS for you and need some advice, do visit the guys at span.com. If you wanna learn more, visit me at nascompares.com where all the guides and the previews and the reviews and the comparisons are. And finally, if you've got a question, why not find me via Twitter and send me a message at Robbie on the Tube. See you later.